Let's let's go. Let's go. All right. Stream started. All right. First cooperative. Cool, 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 cool. We're live, we're live, we're live. All right, hi everybody. Hello, hello, and welcome to our first cooperative game dev stream. background music on but I don't think that'll be a problem yeah no I don't, I don't think so I think we're good all right all I right. guess I need to I guess I should pull up twitch so I can see the chat yeah dude you really gotta get uh chatterino well super super, super good oh maybe I can do it <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I can do it through OBS, but but I don't want to do that. Nah, nah, nah. nah. All, right. All right. Cool. Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, we're doing, we're streaming both of us at the same time. Harrison's gonna be doing some level design, and I'm gonna be working out some uh, 3D environment props. I think it's gonna be kind of cool. Um... It's going to be a pretty collaborative effort. We're going to be doing a lot of back and forth, uh, just, you know, chiming in with each other, making sure that, you know, what we're working on is fitting uh, what the other needs. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be kind of cool. So it's going to be a collaborative effort between us and then uh, you guys in the chat. So if you want to chime in at all at any point, just to, like, uh, have a suggestion for one of us. Uh, feel free to do so and we'll, you know, we'll respond to it and try and work it into our work or if you have any questions we can kind of answer some stuff as we go. Uh, but yeah, this is, a, this is a closer look into kind of how we used to do a lot of our development because a lot of our development was actually uh, in, uh, you know, either in like laundry rooms or, you know, garages or living rooms. Just kind of jointly talking to each other, tossing flash drives back and forth, and just kind of like be like, "Hey, look what I'm working on." It's like, "Okay, that's cool," you know. See what I'm working on, and you know, we're trying to bring that kind of vibe back. So, if this goes yeah, well, that was fun. It wasn't very efficient, but it was no, a lot of fun. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, you know, hey, if you can't have fun while doing game dev every now and then, you know, why do it? That's right. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hop on over to the level I was already working on. Pop, pop this open real quick. Wow, that was loud. Yeah, some little, uh, you know, ASMR monster energy drinking. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, where we left off last time, we were working on... Oh, nope, wrong one. I don't want to open that map. Uh... 
Yeah, so last night I was doing some streaming. Uh, Will was doing some streaming Wednesday. Last thing Will was working on was uh, this new grub creature for uh, Mixed Space Biff. But um, we're going to save that for a whole separate stream because that deserves time and attention. And uh, I think what we're doing here, I think the idea is Will's going to be working on some props um, and just like general environmental stuff that I can use in level design and uh, I'm going to continue working on this level um, yesterday we had some ideas on like you know the types of things we could add into the level and um, a couple of them were like different types of environments uh, like terrariums you know scientific labs that kind of thing so I think we're gonna keep building this level out and see where it goes Yeah, I'm going to try to just sort of rough out some pipes and grates and just sort of start getting ready to kind of make things to add details. Yeah, that's going to be super good because at least I know I'm a big fan of like kind of like steam vent pipes and in like industrial type areas. Uh, and that's the type of thing we could use pretty much everywhere, right? Like basically every kind of environment you could probably slap a pipe in here or there and it's just gonna look fine whether it be like outdoors and it's just like something you know running steam to the steam factory you know just it's true <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's like why are all these pipes running along the ground and it's like why are they all have steam jutting out of them it's like wow how, how else are we gonna get steam to <laughs> to the <laughs> steam factory that's uh no it's yeah it's uh we're 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 pumping Captain McSpace Biff into steam so you know that's where we that's where we want it right you know boo boo <laughs> yeah I know boo man speaking of steam uh so we have a game called uh, Deadlock uh that we released. Let's see, about eight years ago, back in 2016. Uh, it's in early access and, you know, we're actually looking to get back into potentially doing some updates for it pretty soon. Um, we just bought the rights back to it uh, today. So once that's completely finalized, we might roll out an update or two here. But uh, the funny thing about it is uh, on Steam, on different pages, there's uh, discussion boards and our game has discussion boards and right now it's just hundreds and hundreds of people asking for an invite to valve's new game deadlock that hasn't really technically been announced yet right like valve is pretending it doesn't exist and the only way to like get into the alpha is to have a friend uh invite you but all these people think our game is that game, so it's just like every other post is like, please invite me, please invite me, please invite me. So that was uh, kind of funny to open uh, open Steam and just see like hundreds and hundreds of people asking us. And we're just like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, bud. Like, you kind of got the wrong guys. So it goes. Yeah, so it so it goes. So Maya crashed. So that's fun. That's uh so, not uncommon. At least at least it crashed early. This is a uh, nice reminder to everyone to save early and often, right? Especially like, if you use Maya. <laughs> or Unreal. Because <laughs> Unreal also has a tendency to crash a lot. Did that guy punch me? Oh yeah, he did punch me. He needs to die for that. There we go. <laughs> the directional light. Uh, that's right, I closed this area off. I was wondering why it wasn't like showing. Yeah, so I think the idea for this room <coughs> is 
is uh, I'm gonna have a coughing fit. Now, um, this room is gonna be like, uh, what would you call it, like an HVAC room, right? Like I'm thinking there's gonna be like a couple like turbines or whatever, and there's gonna be like some fans on the ceiling. And uh, I like that idea because we can have like dust and stuff like falling from the ceiling, but also you can get like this cool light effect where if you have like the light cast and shadow down from the top of the fan, you can like see the, the fan spinning on the ground. I think that'll be like a nice cool, cool little element. Um, we need a half wall there. What are you working on, Will? Great. Greats. They're gonna be greats. Oh. Don't say it. Yeah, they're gonna be adequate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, not great. Not great. Yeah. All right. Let's. But, see. You know, I'm just trying to. I don't know. You know, you're just gonna run right past them. They just they just need to be there. Are you working off of the um, size of like the general uh, four by four yeah. that we use? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep, yep. Yeah, you, you know, is you know better. Base, base five twelve. I know better now. <laughs> Took me yeah. a long time to learn it. Yeah. So um, everything we do is on this like snap kit system. And uh, we've everything's like 512 by 512, and then vertically it's uh, 384. And because there are different dimensions, and we wanted everything to like snap together really, really well, we ended up building this like uh, blueprint snap kit system. So they always like bungee into place. Because if you, for instance, like turn it off, and you want to use the regular snap kit, right? And this is our little cell snap. Uh, system you can't see here I'll scroll down to it this right here if you turn it off and just use unreals you know see looks good on this way right you know everything rotates correctly but uh, the issue is when you want to like bring it up yeah see now it now it's not on the same grid system and going back and forth between that like 384 and 512 is just Super, super annoying. And more importantly than that, if you were to bring in any piece somewhere else on the map, they may not, they may not connect up at some point, right? So that's why we built that. And so far, it's made my life so much better. Don't ask me why Maya's crashed twice already. That's already? Not normal. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because you're streaming. Maybe. Maybe like computer bandwidth is just like giving out on you. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we were just gonna. We'll just see how it goes. You know, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna save as if I'm, you know, playing Stalker. You know, and I'm expecting it to crash. <laughs> <laughs> Man. What is it about, like, some of the best games uh, just are terribly unstable, right? I don't know. Minus ours, of course, right? Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ours are super stable and super good. And there's nothing wrong with them ever. And if anyone says anything different, they're a liar. No, but for real, um, our games are actually like pretty stable. Pretty proud of that. Um, but yeah, like speaking of unstable games, um, I was talking in the chat the other day about uh, Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, which is uh one of the most like buggy games ever released um but man is it just baskets of fun that is a classic nice 
Um, wall C. That's Gaslit by this. It's like pretending it doesn't exist. Okay. Oh, it's metal, that's why. Oh, uh, okay. Yep, that makes sense. See, that's what happens when you don't use the cell snap. Things can, like, get healthier skelter. Yeah, so I think for uh, for the grate, you should be able to like look down through it and maybe even potentially like shoot through it. But the character should definitely not even like look like they could like snag a foot in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about shooting through it, but I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be much of a grate if you couldn't see through it. Yes, yeah, well, shooting through it could cause some gameplay problems, but... I don't could know. be interesting. I don't could know, be. maybe. <laughs> yeah, it could be kind of cool. Now you got me thinking about it. I don't know, maybe. It could be cool. For now, I'm just gonna see if I can make this thing exist before Maya crashes and gives up the ghost. <laughs> XSI would never do you like that. XSI, uh, come back, soft image. <laughs> Can we get like a petition going or something to like resurrect soft image XSI? That would be so good. People aren't ready for it, man. Yeah, speaking of just like cult cult classic that's overlooked, soft homage, dude. I mean, it's not like it was pretty industry standard, actually. I mean, you know, Metal Gear. I mean, well, Metal I mean, Gear like overlooked in the sense that like people picked Maya as the thing to move on with instead of XSI. Probably just because it could do animation as well, pretty pretty well now xsi could too i mean there's really no reason yeah it's just like people just decided to pick it for i don't know yeah i don't know it's a mystery, it's a mystery i mean life. to me like me personally maya has never really been all that impressive to me like it doesn't really do anything other programs don't um true It kind of grows on you when it's... Yeah, I mean, I, I like it. It's just, like, it's weird how it became, like, the industry standard software. Um, I think it's just because it's so old. Yeah, me, yeah, it just, like, got a foothold before everyone else. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how uh, just Adobe exists, and Adobe is, like, oh, yeah. garbage, to be honest. But there's, mm -hmm. like... You know, not really any solid competition because they've just like stamped everyone out and they beat everyone. Yeah, there's um, what's the saying? You can uh, you can either be smarter, uh, be first or cheat <laughs> to like get ahead and uh. uh. Adobe did all three. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. All right, this is sort of the moment of truth here. If it uh, if it if it crashes if, or not, <laughs> yeah, 
If it doesn't, <laughs> come on. I think we'll be okay, come on. Come on. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah, I'm thinking we're back. All right. <laughs> my that's doctor. A, that's a great. Yeah. My my therapist said I have a gambling addiction, and I told them, "How do you know I use Maya?" <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol abuse? I would never. I love alcohol. I, I love alcohol. It's too. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, 99% of gamblers quit just before they're about to hit it big. Yeah, no, my gambling is, like, awful, right? Because it's just, like, out of, like, all the addictions you could have, it's, like, one of the one of the worst. It's just, like, I mean, you can't do $50,000 worth of, like, cocaine in one night, <laughs> right? Maybe you can't. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can't, you know. I don't know, those I bet 80s actors. there's someone actors, out there that could. Just any 80s actor. <laughs> Let's put it this way. <laughs> you couldn't do $50,000 worth of cocaine and then go back the next day and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Gambling, you can, uh, you can double that every time. <laughs> <laughs> True. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so yesterday, originally we kind of wanted this level to be more like a, not linear, but more like a classic, like, uh, Halo 2, Halo 3 type level, where it was like funneling you in one direction, but uh, after talking to chat and just the more I thought about it, I like the idea of it kind of being like a, like a branching area. See, a lot of the uh, levels in our um, game Root had a lot of, like, options when it came to, like, solving everything, right? And uh, usually what we would do is there would be a singular endpoint in the level, and then there would be multiple paths on how to get there, but it would require you to get a couple different items in the level to be able to, like, just move on, right? And it wouldn't make you get all of them, but it would make you get just enough to where, you know, you would have to run through the level a little bit. So I think something similar for this level could be good. Like, I don't know, maybe having to kick on a couple generators. Um, one thing we had talked about yesterday was... Uh, there being like a, a blast door keeping you from like moving in further into the facility and uh, because the facility is like technically on high alert because there's like different things happening in the facility so like in one area there's like a, a grub infestation just like munched on monitor wires and like that whole area is in disarray there could be like a gas leak somewhere else and then you know like some corrupted moon bots that are aggressive to uh, everyone, right? And uh, the general facility has like a monitoring system that gauges the threat level. And if a threat level goes over a certain amount, uh, the blast door locks to the inner facility to keep anything from uh, like damaging like the core portion of the facility. So. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we have like four or five different rooms or, you know, just even two or three and you only have to clear out a certain portion of them to lower the threat level to what the system considers like an acceptable margin to like let you further into the, into the level. But, you know, if you want to 100% it, you can still 100% it. 
I kind of like that idea. I like that idea. Yeah, that sounds yeah. cool. Kind of neat. And it's it's basically like on paper, that's just how we did the key cards in Root. Like it's just like, okay, you need three clearances to get through this firewall, and it's just like, okay, how many are there in the level? Five. That guy wasn't moving because I haven't built the nav mesh here. He's not broken, I promise. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. That's looking pretty good. I like that. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just kind of experimenting with some different ideas. Uh, I think I want to have some kind of like clamp sort of detail thing coming over this. Mmm, something like that's like clamping it to the other surfaces? Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, that could be cool. And you know, we could probably at some point have a version of the grate that's like more dilapidated looking and maybe you could even break those that'd be kind of cool yeah that could be cool hmm let's see All the bridges I'm going to bring into this level are more or less just a reminder that I need a bridge. Mm, yeah. A less minecart looking bridge. Yeah. This is a cool, like, this is like a really cool desert bridge. But yeah, for like an indoor facility, doesn't quite fit the vibe. What I need is like a script to change these grid iterations by powers of two. Like just like uh, press plus yeah. and minus to just like switch that. That would be so cool. That would be pretty sick. That'd be a good project.
so far we're looking all right. Haven't had too many more crashes. Pretty excited about that. Yeah, just not having anything break on you is kind of like a massive achievement. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, do I want that thing? Hmm. Oh, it's a curvy bridge. It is a curvy bridge. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. That's the doors opening when you like load a level. Oh, you're talking about the sound? Yeah. I didn't I didn't hear that on my end. I was uh shocked by my mesh disintegrating. Oh, suddenly. so different shock for different reasons. Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. Hey, I'll be right back. I'm going to run to the restroom. Right, In the meantime, enjoy this, uh, these lovely bots floating around. Very atmospheric. Very atmospheric. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright. Well, yeah, so this is our first dual uh, stream. Hopefully, hopefully it's working well. Uh, it took a little bit to get it set up. But yeah, we're just kind of working on the game, you know, like this is just kind of what we do, you know, for fun. Uh, we've been doing this for fun for a long time, and so yeah, we're just kind of, you know, trying to make some stuff. So Harrison's kind of working on the space, trying to, you know, kind of come up with some good gameplay, some good level design, uh, and I'm trying to make some stuff to kind of fill it out, so... I just got started making these little floor grates. Uh, we'll also try to make some pipes that can run along underneath them so you can, you know, have some interesting stuff to look at while you run around the level. using Maya for my 3D modeling. It's serviceable. I've kind of gotten used to it. Oh, 
But yeah, Captain McSpace Biff is a, an idea we came up with a pretty long time ago. It's just kind of a fun, silly shooter game. You play as a, an astronaut exploring an alien planet, rescuing the remnants of a colony. And yeah, it's just kind of just kind of a silly game. Just kind of, you know, the point is just kind of have fun, shoot some aliens, that kind of thing. Just sort of back to the classics, you know. Maybe think of it as like Borderlands meets Idiocracy, something like that. Maya has a, a pretty adequate grid snapping system. Uh, it's pretty useful for certain things. Keeping everything to scale, keeping things lined up. Very important when making a game. For a very long time, I very much undervalued the importance of grid snapping and just sort of freehanded everything. Uh, and I still do sometimes some pretty freehandy stuff, but uh, it's definitely worth having certain things on a system. All right. What's up? I was just kind of <laughs> talking that? about uh, grids and how, you know, the benefits of having a system uh, so that your assets all work together. Oh, dude, you yeah. know, what would happen in the past is we would sort of make something and then it would only kind of work in one particular little area and you wouldn't really be able to reuse it at all. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a lifesaver. Kind of from the get-go. I mean, Root was the first game we kind of started working on a grid system. And, uh... You know, it's not it's not perfect for every type of game, but I feel like every game could probably, you know, use that sort of system to a degree, right? If you're gonna have like man-made anything, it makes sense to like have some things on a grid system. Well, and even if it's not man-made, you know, you can you can know that like jumps that you set up are gonna work with the right, player's right. jump height and you know like there's just a lot of a lot of reasons it's important yeah for like gray boxing at the very least mm -hmm. yeah and i mean you know you want to like break it up you know you don't want it to feel like it's all on a grid uh, but but just look at Lego, you know, like, you know, people can build incredible things in Lego that you, you know, and you never, like, they look extremely organic. Like Bionicle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's not what I was talking about, but... Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> but, but Bionicle any, is very cool. But any chance to bring up Bionicle, you know we're going to bring up Bionicle. <laughs> Speaking of Bionicle, shout out to that uh, 
indie project where they're making the entirety of Massa Nui in uh, Unreal Engine 5 and the game like looks pretty solid for like a not officially licensed Bionicle game. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I don't remember the name of it. Wish I did. So I think I it's just it called up. Bionicle. It, yeah, it's probably just called... If you look <laughs> up Unreal Engine Bionicle game, you'll find it. Did I like break everything? Yeah, it did. Dang it. This bridge blueprint is super cool. Yeah, and it'll work with any tiling mesh. So, you know, yeah. we can reuse that code on, on as many things as we need. Well, and that's why I went ahead and like put the effort into, you know, build this out, right? Because if I just swap the mesh out, it should still be a bendy bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah remotely the same. I probably shouldn't scale it, though, now that I think about it. Because yeah, yeah, build, don't, we're, don't we're, try to we're scale going it. to... I scaled it vertically, so it's not, like, super busted, but yeah. If we're going to actually replace the model, um, scaling it would be kind of detrimental. Yeah, look at that. That's not bad looking. <laughs> kind of yeah. interesting. Oh, that is interesting. <sighs> you know what? It, it doesn't not fit the vibe, to be honest. Like, for the type of room I'm building. That's yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's not, not awful. I mean, we're going to need a different bridge part at some point anyway but I think in this case this might actually be okay um, it should be more like it should look more structurally curvable right yeah, like yeah <laughs> uh, I agree yeah because that's a yeah that's that's the engineering term <laughs> Structurally curvable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what architects and uh, structural engineers would definitely use. Yeah. Ooh, that's what I want. I want to do it for here. Oh no, I lied. I don't want that. Uh, man, if it was just like, I wonder if I get, okay. Well, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> let me just undo this entirely.
Hmm. Oh man, yeah, I don't know what I want to do with these bridges. I know I want them like crisscrossing, you know, throughout the entire. Ooh, whoops. Definitely don't want to do that. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. jumping to it if you have that super jump at this point in the game you could probably oh uh, we'll we'll fix that oh no, i mean like the in like ability. <laughs> Not, ability. <laughs> uh, yeah so funny enough uh right now we have this like super jump bug where when you're dodging in the air and if uh Currently, when you dodge, it just applies force in whatever direction the character is moving. And the idea was you could, you know, dodge in the air to, like, move left, right, forward, and back. Um, but what we didn't take into account is up and down in the code. Uh, so if you happen to be, like, moving up when you dodge, it applies that force up. And if you do it at the right time, you, like, super jump. And you can also do the same thing where you, like, rock into the ground. Um, but... That glitch did inspire uh, a potential ability we're gonna add where you do just get a super jump at some point. So, hey, it's like one of those, like, it's a feature, not a bug situations. Yep, when the game gives you bugs, I don't know, you make lemonade. I was gonna say, you. Turn them into features, but yeah, that works too. <laughs> I don't know if the issue is that this isn't a curvable bridge. I think it's more so just uh, if you don't move the uh, the joints out enough, right? Because if you like try and stretch one area too long, you'll get weird. Uh, let's, oh, jeez. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I want. And then, oh, Will, uh, you saw that new, like, stalker gameplay video? Oh, uh, I saw the with the environment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That Dude, it's really like cool. crazy because it's got like all the. I mean, you would expect that Chernobyl, you know, would still be the same place, but. I don't know. It, it's, it it's, looks very cool. I'm excited for it. Um, I never like played a bunch of it, but just from watching uh, you play, I even like recognize some areas. Uh huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's got some very distinct environments. This is right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You think sticking to like a post-apocalyptic theme wouldn't allow for very many. Uh, environment varieties, but they did a pretty good job from what I saw. Oh yeah, they did for sure. I think it comes out in November? I want to say November. I don't remember. What is, what, why is that? I a thousand percent did not turn that.
start watching Cowboy Bebop again. Dude. Classic. It's so good. Even like the first couple episodes. Like, the first couple episodes are decent, but uh, it, it definitely is like a show that picks up, in my opinion. Yeah. Just, well. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoyed it all. Right, but I feel like one of the strongest bits of that show is just the dynamic between all the different characters versus, like, any one individual character. And, like, at first, it's just, you know... Oh, yeah. Jet yeah, Spike. it definitely... It does get better. I just finished the uh, Data Dog episode. <laughs> yeah, that that's such a good one. Seems that way. Seems that way. Hmm. Seems that way. This entire bridge could probably be. Yeah, that looks better. That's better. I, I have been watching through the old Twilight Zones. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty cool. It's a vibe. It's a vibe for sure. And everything was not what it seemed. <laughs> <laughs> That's every episode. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and the monster was man. <laughs> <laughs> I Sometimes mean, yeah, the monster is just a monster. <laughs> yeah, but it's usually yeah, it, it kind of invented the whole the monster is man thing. Yeah, like it that's like such a trope now, but it's just like, you know, back when they first did it, it was just like, oh my gosh. I guess mm -hmm. man is the monster. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. And and pe people had never had I guess the Geneva Convention exists for a reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. See, growing up, I always thought the Geneva Convention was just something we held yearly for our school. <laughs> <laughs> for context, Will and I went to a private school called Geneva. And we didn't get to do any fun war crimes. No, not not even a one. <laughs> Which, you know, what was even the point? I know, right? I don't know. Playing playing airsoft barefoot in the school parking lot was pretty dope though. That was pretty cool, yeah. Not everyone got to do that at school, that's true. Yeah, now if you tried to do that, you would uh, be arrested. trouble making this curvy bridge look correct yeah it's, it's tough it's tough I'm, I'm having a little trouble with some of this stuff too it's uh you know sometimes things just sort of come together on the first try and sometimes some, they really just don't sometimes they just suck all the way through until it's done yep yep that's a uh, that's a lot of level design actually it's just it's just like, oh, all this sucks. And I can't do anything about it because I'm not like far enough in to do anything about it. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. It's like everything kind of builds, you yeah. know, builds up on top. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like nothing seldom is just like right on the first try. You know, you usually have to go through a lot of iteration to get it right. Yeah, and some things just suck forever. <laughs> In fact, most things just kind of suck forever. <laughs> well, not I not not most things. Most things. <laughs> 
but a lot of things. But yes, there are a lot of things that are just the suck. Um, a lot of a lot of modern games. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just think, yeah, just think how hard it is being a AAA dev. I mean, you know, you clock in 9 to 5, you work on stuff, you know, you work hard all day, and then the game just sucks. Yep, because it's just, the ideas are bad, it's mismanaged, there's, like, no communication between departments, there's not a cohesive, you know, flow or anything, and then things are just changing the whole time, and you're not hearing about it, right? It's like one team heard about like okay we're changing this thing and then you know another team's like still working on a feature or a level or art based off of something that they think is still in the game mm. and then they find out you know at the end of the week oh no actually we're pivoting again it's just like oh man this game has no identity it's just a billion different things mashed together and it's all being built quickly and sloppily in order to like appease shareholders who have no idea what makes a good game, right? They just want That's it right. out, they want to make money, and they don't and care. they're not going to play it. Yeah. They're not going to play it. They're just like, okay, how does this game churn out the most money possible? Let's do that. Mm -hmm. And the devs are just like, uh, what? What do you mean? What you want me to do? What you want me to make a co-op live service game when our studio makes strictly single-player first-person storytelling experiences? Uh, I don't think that will go well. And they, they just, you know, they just go shut up and make us our money, and then you know it ends up not working out, and then the shareholders are like, well, I guess we shut that studio down. At least I'm assuming it goes like that, yeah. 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 Something like that. I wasn't just directly quoting what happened to uh, Arcane. <laughs> <laughs> trying to come up with some kind of like, uh, you know, like that industrial, like... What do you even call that stuff? Like this stuff. Oh, you know, um, like, like insulation stuff padding. That's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like the stuff that used to be in like the hangar ceiling uh, at my old school, and like around all the pipes and everything. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I just refer to it as like cloth insulation, I guess. That is kind of cool though. I like that material. That'd be really good for like pipes. Uh -huh. Well, and it's like we could use it for pipes and we could use it like as a drape to cover walls. Yeah, you could put it behind uh, walls. Mm -hmm. Like if you like, you know, deleted a wall or like pulled it out a little bit, having that and then like wires and stuff would be very very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of that's that's kind of the idea. All right, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I am liking this bridge. 
That's a nice Pretty bridge. cool. Nice. Yeah, and I can imagine fighting drones in this room. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good room for fighting flying enemies. Yeah, like having uh, like little holes in the walls that they could like pop out of. I think we should make some sort of like drone generator like hole hub, similar to how we're gonna make like those like grub skag holes. Oh uh, yeah, and, that's a good idea. You know, it just keeps spitting them out until you blow it up. Mm -hmm. I think I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, let me flip this. Throw a grenade in there like hell divers. <laughs> yes. I think you could do uh, similar stuff in like Halo 3. There are like flood spawners in like certain levels. I think in Cortana, like when you're infiltrating that like flood ship, there are like, uh, like little spawn hubs that you could like blow up. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I always thought it was a shame that, uh, we didn't get flood firefight. I mean, it exists now, but uh, I was about back, to say, yeah, didn't back they finally in the day, do that? Yeah, they yeah. they finally did that, which you know, good for them. But it's, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same as like playing it with your friends on your like crappy CRT monitor at like two in the morning at a sleepover, right? Yeah, it's like everyone who on cares Xbox about it live on Xbox Live, man. Everyone who cares about that kind of stuff is like 34 now and has a full-time job and a mortgage. Yeah. Well, not a mortgage, but you know, bills. <laughs> Most people can't afford a mortgage. Because our economy's in shambles. Woo! World economic collapse. At least we're having fun. Yeah, we're having fun. We're having fun. We're having a good time. It's a, it'll be a fun collapse. You know. <laughs> we'll make the most of it. Even more. Where's Mormon A? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, sir, Bob Tickle. Uh, Wally. Wally, Wally, Wally. Wally, 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 world. Harrison's having a mental breakdown on stream. Yeah, yeah, so, you know. Normally, that's reserved for Tuesdays and Thursdays, but... This is bonus. This is bonus! Bo bonus <laughs> bonus breakdown. Bonus breakdown, baby! Double. Now I've, now I've got someone to witness it in person and live and commentate. Double feature, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> and Harrison's moving into... <laughs> Finishing hour one with us. First mental breakdown. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. We are witnessing history. Now, 
Witnessing history implies that I don't have mental breakdowns at all. When in reality, it's it's like a daily daily thing. But are you daily. really a game developer if you're not having at least one mental breakdown per like session, right? Like whether it be, you know, Maya crashing and losing lots of work, or Unreal like freezing on you, or like, you know. Just bugs or texture glitches or Z fighting. Who knows, man? There's so many things that could like break the psyche of of a lesser person. But game devs, they're just you know, we're built a little different. We're built worse. <laughs> yeah. The because, you know, we look at these big AAA games that hundreds of people work on, you know, talented people, people that train their whole life to just master their skill, you know, and then like hundreds of them get together and, you know, with the most creative and technically brilliant people they can find and they make something. And then we play it and we're like, damn, that was cool. I could do that. <laughs> Um, I'm, I th you know what? Why don't we do that? And you're like, yeah, I think I could do that too. And so we're like, hell yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. And yeah, and then you sit are. down, <laughs> and it's like it's like every fresh game dev or like someone who wants to get into game dev, they're just like, man, you know, MMO RPGs are cool, but I think my idea for an MMO RPG. That's that's the real winner. So all I need to do is sit down and open an engine and surely surely I'll be able to make the 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 dream game that I've always wanted. Yeah, like World of Warcraft was close. <laughs> yeah, it, it just, just wasn't quite it just didn't quite have It, it just you know, know World of Warcraft <laughs> it didn't have enough zombies and guns in it. <laughs> and crafting and you know, base building. So And so, so all I have to do is do all the all the what I need to do to get to World of Warcraft and then I add the zombies and guns. Yeah, yeah. And then, Super and then easy. That'll be so cool, yeah. You know, and then while I'm at it, uh allow players to like also play it offline. You know, because that's yeah, just, that's easy, right? Like, I already, I made this massively multiplayer online game with, like, all these, like, servers and intricate things. So, I'll just, like, add a button that allows players to play all that offline, right? <laughs> well, and don't, and don't expect any accolades for doing that, because it's the law now. Yeah, oh my god, dude. <laughs> that's not even, or, yeah, that's, that's insane it, to me. <laughs> I mean, I... Here's the thing. I, I get what they're trying to say, right? Like, games that should not require an online connection, you know, you should have the right to continue to play them once they're, like, done with their, like, live service, like, skin churn or whatever. But games with, like, permanent online infrastructures that require servers to, like, run and aren't built for peer-to-peer... Uh, to make to make a dev like support that past the point where the game is like just not making any money is a form of cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like you're just not going to make a multiplayer game, you know? Yeah. If, if that's it's just the... like yeah. If that okay, that's that's the rule. Congratulations, guys. You don't get hell divers now. Yeah, yeah. Because no hell divers, hell divers wouldn't work offline. Like, it requires that like massive multiplayer map. It'd be it'd be lame. I mean, yeah, just fire yeah. up a, a a solo <laughs> hell divers, and you know, you'll see what I mean. Oh, hey, Sim Cook, what's up? What's yeah, up? We're dude? doing the double stream. Double stream. Double disappointment. <laughs> not not for y'all for us when we when we're working on our stuff and it's it's crashing and breaking and falling we shambles. are both kind of having a rough time tonight like like i'm not super i don't know why i don't know i'm not really jazzed with any of this stuff that i've made so far 
And, yeah, and Harrison's kind of struggling along too. Just just by being me, honestly. <laughs> it's not so much that like the stuff I'm making is bad, it's just that I'm broken as a person. On the bright side though, I am in this nice sunny desert, so you know, that does kinda raise the mood a little bit. Oh yeah, with a nice wind billowing in the background. Yeah, yeah it's pretty got, cool. yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean a little it's a little sandy. Yeah, and I'm confined to a corner of uh, this despicable dungeon that I'm building. A so. dungeon of your own making. <laughs> a dungeon of my own making. Uh, what better... What better prison? Anyway, welcome to the stream. This is going to be a mess. But, uh... Yeah, now you can comment not on one... One bit of game development, but two. You'd be like, hey, that model looks like crap. Hey, the level looks like crap. You guys should do something about it. 3D modeling and level design. What's next? Um, we're going to uh, start adding a third person who's going to be mixing uh, live polka tracks. And playing Fortnite. And, and playing Fortnite <laughs> and running the 90s and just, uh, you know, throw up a, you know, TikTok brain rot in the corner. Then, you know, like a, a Family Guy live stream in the bottom right. And then, you know, like a, just a, like a, a soap cutting video. I mean, it's, it's what the kids want, right? All while making a game. <laughs> All while making a game. <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna sit here and find out that uh, that all those Devry University ads where people made games with controllers, it's actually true, right? You know, when you see all those like uh, game colleges, you're like, you could you could make video games and, and and play video games for a living, and that you know it's showing like Maya. <laughs> and the person like has a Xbox controller out. That's what that's those, what you those can were see good on this ads. Yeah. Those were good ads. There's nothing like a like a generational <laughs> bait and switch that is going to <laughs> financially bankrupt <laughs> millennials for generations to come. And the only type of financial bankruptcy that you can't actually declare bankruptcy on. It's just like yeah, there's nothing like. You know, let's go to let's go to DeVry and like full sale and spend a hundred thousand dollars a year to learn how to make video games. Uh, when I could watch a Brackies tutorial for free and it tell me the same thing. <laughs> I mean, oh, you miss out on the camaraderie though. Yeah, all the camaraderie. It's just like, yeah, you're you're also up to your eyes in financial debt. I'm up to my eyes in financial debt. You can't get a job in the game industry? I can't get a job in the game industry. Oh my gosh, this is so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, game colleges suck. And you can quote me on that. Nothing better. Nothing better. Excellent ads. Yeah, dude. Excellent ads. Video games and college debt? I mean, to be fair, that just sounds like the average college experience. I've been quoted. Please, please don't actually quote me. I don't want to. Be, I don't want to be sued by full sale. <laughs> Next stream. <laughs> Next stream. Harrison's legal proceedings. <laughs> Harrison. Harrison. Next stream. <laughs> it's just me in court. All right. Yo, chat. Live streaming my court. My court mandated community service. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm cleaning the bathrooms at PAX. <laughs> oh man you joke you joke don't don't manifest that <laughs> hey man i i have said i always wanted to go to pax i didn't mean it like that but <laughs> hey man you know i have a lot of experience cleaning out shitters that are full <laughs> thanks to thanks to staples oh boy Oh man, dude. 
What a mess. <laughs> yeah, let's try to reel that back let's, in from let's, the let's, ether. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's reel this in. <laughs> this is, uh... Yeah, come on, on, Harrison. <laughs> lock in. <laughs> gotta... Gotta lock in. You know, this is alright. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> This, this this little metal thing. Oh, the landmine that I, I just stepped on. <laughs> it's not a landmine. It's uh, a <laughs> because it does look like a landmine. Yeah, but now it's supposed to be like a like a valve or a you know like a fitting for a pipe. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. got to start somewhere. There now now it's a pipe. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah! Wow! Wow! Very cool. Hmm. Pipes are one of the worst things to model, actually. Like, <coughs> to think of it, because it's like they look so simple, you know, but but they're really kind of not that simple. Well, especially if you're going to use a system uh, using like Blueprint or Houdini, and you want it to be able to curve and like look good. Mm -hmm. Um. It, so you can't put too much detail repeating because people will notice. But if there's no detail on it at all, people will go, oh, there's no detail. So, Right. Well, and it's like even just the geometry of a, of a pipe is like, you know, like obviously the straight pieces are easy. But like, but like these pieces, I don't know why that's so blurry. But, but you know, like that's not simple geometry. Um but it looks like it. It's kind of like like highways and infrastructure. Like yeah, modeling that kind of stuff yeah. is really not that easy. Dude, highways are crazy difficult. Like it's why you see like all these tutorials doing like a highway tutorial. And it's just like, okay, here's our highway tutorial and it's just a straight road and it's like, no, I need intersections. I need on-ramps. How do I do that? Yeah, straight road. <laughs> easy. But easy. like something that's actually like real, you know, not easy. I've seen a fair share of pipe modeling thumbnails. Yeah, Sim Cook. Yeah, now you know why. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. It's there's there's a lot of nuance to the pipe. <laughs> don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, don't clip that, please, <laughs> please. Oh boy. Uh, in, in a uh, Lord of the Rings Gandalf smoking kind of way. Yeah. Mm. There you go. There you go. You know, I uh, I just recently read through the Silmarillion and some of the like other Tolkien stuff. And it was really <laughs> interesting. But my favorite part, my favorite part was discovering that when the hobbits talk about pipe weed, it's like basically weed. Yeah, it's like like it's it's just actually weed. It's that they're actually getting zooted off of that that sticky icky, and then walking for eight hundred miles. It really it really kind of makes the whole book make more sense. It's just like why why didn't they have the eagles carry carry the ring to Mordor, dude? They were they were just off their ass, dude. Why they're eating eight meals a day, and you think they're not high? Like, second breakfast is stoner meal, dude. <laughs> That's true. That's true. This is true? This is true? Because they wouldn't have learned anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But also, uh, like, the eagles were uh, corruptible, right? Well, no. So the eagles... Oh, uh, the no, eagles... they just don't care. Because they're... No, that's, it's not that. It's not that. The eagles are uh, in Valinor. And Valinor is not in Middle Earth anymore. It was, but then at the end of the Second Age, the world changes, and Valinor becomes a an ethereal place and not a physical place. And that's where the eagles are from. So it's like, you know, it takes a like like an act of God to bring the eagles in, right? Ah. Uh, Oh, right. So, was Gandalf able to summon those eagles because he became the White Wizard? 
No, no, it doesn't really have anything to do with Gandalf, um, because Gandalf is like he doesn't have that much power. Um, right. he, he's basically, but basically, the the Valar are you know across the across the sea, and you know they they watch Middle Earth, but they don't really interfere with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and and they decided to interfere with it, like at the at the last second, basically. Wow. Um, dicks. Yeah. <laughs> but aren't we glad that they did? Yeah. True. I mean... My boy, my boy Frodo and Sam got to live. So, I'm glad. I'm glad for that, after everything they did. That's right. I was also thinking, like... They, they might have just been staying out of it until, you know, the ring was destroyed. That was, like, like kind of my thoughts. It's like, you know, if they're going to cross over, why put themselves uh, in all that danger, right? Because mm. up until the moment that the ring was destroyed, you know, Sauron was, like, at peak power. And, well... uh... He was Lord of the Rings he winning? Static. Like, wasn't he kind of winning the battle against men? Well, yeah, because, you know, men had declined so much. Um, but that's not really... Like, Sauron, you know, is, is nothing compared to the Valar. Like, the Valar are, you know, infinitely stronger, but they just don't... They don't fight. Like, they don't... It, it's complicated, but, you know, they're not... They're not human, and so they don't think right. like humans. Right. What, so what you're trying to say is, like, in Planet America, you don't fuck with the eagles, because, you know... That's right. <laughs> All-powerful, baby! Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Darn right. Because they wouldn't learn anything. Dude, I love the, the Lord of the Rings lore. This is why you need people who can read the Silver Alien in your life. I use can intentionally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, you got to be in the mood for it. Like, dude, if you're going into it, like, expecting, like, the Lord of the Rings, you'll be disappointed. But but it's fun. You know, it's, it's it was a good read. It's like reading numbers. Yeah, a little bit. But it's it's more like... exciting than... You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a good, it's a good book. But, uh, yeah, dude, uh, my, <laughs> so funny enough, my first Lord of the Rings book was The Silmarillion. Uh, oh, and, wow. Starting and, off. Starting yeah, off. yeah. And I was just <laughs> like, cause I was like, I was told by, this is, this is so stupid, dude. So I was told by an adult. It's just like, yeah. So you know what an encyclopedia is, right? And I'm like, yes. I'm seven, but I know what an encyclopedia is. And he's like, okay, so the Silmarillion is like the encyclopedia for Lord of the Rings. So if you want to know what something is in the Lord of the Rings, you need the encyclopedia. <laughs> and I took that as, I need to read the Silmarillion first. As a seven-year-old with no context of anything. I would read The Hobbit. That's okay. I mean, that's he's, not true. He's I, I read right. You know, if if you could have gotten through it, then yeah. But I'm I'm seven, and epic. like yeah. I'm watching like Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons, and like barely muscling my way through those, and then like here's like a forty year old man telling me like you need to read the Silmarillion if you want to get into the Lord of the Rings, and I'm like okay, I'll do that, and then you know I get like four chapters, and I'm like I don't I don't know what any of this is. I can't pronounce these words and it's hurting my brain oh that's okay that's the trick yeah so if you guys are gonna try to read it uh just be prepared to look up every single thing in the appendix yeah you have like, to go the back first to the first like 100 pages you're gonna <laughs> just be going back to the appendix like like every four words yeah after except... that then you kind of get you know the feel for it and then you then it becomes a lot more fun. I didn't read. know to do that though. I was like seven and I was yeah. like, I really no, I liked The a, Hobbit. <laughs> I had the same experience. I, I started reading it, you know, when I was a kid and I was just like, this book doesn't make any sense. This, this is lame. This Tolkien guy doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to go play Bionicle in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Oh man. Speaking of deep lore, <laughs> Bionicle is uh When Tolkien died, he was reborn as a Bionicle uh, uh -huh. fan, fan theorist. It does have some pretty some pretty badass lore. <laughs> like reading numbers only crap. Yeah, dude, it's uh it's uh I'm not it's saying like, you shouldn't read numbers, you know, it's just yeah, hard. <laughs> it's hard, yeah. You need to get the encyclopedia reading into public school stat, yeah. True. Big if true. But we'll settle for just reading first. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. They don't even like make you like have to be able to read anymore to graduate. That is kind of nuts. We're, we're gonna get banned. We, we need to change gears. Yeah. Um. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. What about baking? Do they teach baking in schools? That's what I'm doing right now. Doing some baking. Ooh, this is some tasty bakes, brother. I always thought it would be cool to have like, you know how people make like USB, like, um, like switches for flight sims and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I always thought it'd be cool to take like a, like a rotary encoder, like <laughs> that's, that kind of snaps like an oven, you know, like the, like oh, the, like the oven timer. An oven. <laughs> yeah. And just like have that on your desk and have it like run a script to bake mesh maps or something. Oh dude, that's so, so just literally just like turn it up to 450 and bake. It'd be even funnier if you had like a uh, like a monitor specifically for baking, but it's like put in like an easy bake oven, and you know well, you look you, through you the little it, you, you look, look through you the look you look through the grate, <laughs> and then the moment your bake, you know your mesh bake is done, it just ding, and then it pops open. <laughs> I kind of love that. Yeah. Maybe we should do, we should do that. That's like if I had a 3D printer and unlimited time, I would do something like that. Heck yeah. Yeah, let's actually let's abandon game design uh entirely and build a uh little easy bake oven monitor that is specifically built for mesh lighting bakes. Yeah. All, for all five people who are going to spend the seven hundred dollars to buy it. Yeah, I don't know if there's five people out there even. I mean, yeah, I don't know. That'd be I pretty, mean, it's a pretty me. niche product right there. <laughs> we'll buy our own product. To How, why would I buy it? I've already built it. You know? To to inflate the numbers. To make buy the it. to make to it look good for the investor board. The effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh man. Our numbers are are really bad. We gotta make it look good to the investors. This my is my brother in Christ. We are the investors. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> you gotta hemorrhage, hemorrhage everything you put into it in order to get an inkling of movement. This message was brought to you by Bethesda Game Studios. All right, I'm gonna gonna bake some material IDs. Nice. I just gotta. I don't know. Modeling is just not really clicking, so I'm just gonna try doing a little texturing. Yeah. I feel like this room could use one more bridge. I want it. I want it to feel like spaghetti. Whoa! <laughs> what happened? I missed it. Nothing. Just make space. Biff is just double cheeked up on a Friday evening. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Anytime you look up and crouch, it's just. Oh man. That sounds uh, like that man's like quads. a you problem. <laughs> oh, it ain't a problem, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Yo, yo, yo! Sorry, my phone froze up. What did I miss? Oh, oh man, it's 
Nothing. Uh, nothing. <laughs> we're yeah, you've missed nothing. We're you know we've just been quietly, quietly modeling and baking and not talking about turning. We've just been our best behavior all time. Right. Yep, just best behavior. Not talking about you know turning easy bake ovens into monitors that then you know make a noise when your light bakes are finished and. To be honest, that was probably the tamest thing we were talking about. So. It was pretty good, yeah. That... That's actually a good million dollar idea. Uh, property of Skunk Cape Interactive, do not steal. Uh, but yeah, you have as much. It's just us saying nonsense. Uh, Will's talking about like he's not really feeling the meshes he's working on, so he's probably going to work on some texturing instead, which is good because. Um, we do need some textures. You crazy kids. Yeah, dude. We're uh, uh, we're all hopped up on Doritos and Mountain Dew. It's a Friday night and we're doing nothing but playing video I games. I wish. All I've got is LaCroix. That's, that's probably better for you than Mountain Dew. I would, I would wager. The stream was brought to you by LaCroix. I want these to be equidistant from each other. Yeah, I got the gray box blues. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't <coughs> know. it's getting there. It is really hard sometimes just to like look past. You know what the problem is? I didn't put enough effort into my reference gathering. It's like, I just kind of got these like 3D pipes. Yeah. They, they, you know, there's no character to any of these things. You're working off you know? of reference slop. You don't have the yeah. proper ingredients to make a five-star meal. Yeah, I need better reference. This one's pretty good. I like this. I'll, I like I'll that one a lot. That's that's very like that. space biffy, like old school. Mm hmm But those aren't but... those aren't pipes or grates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like so. that reference is great, but it's not what we're making. Yeah. So this grate is fine, you know, it's whatever, it'll work. You know what, is it fine like this? Yeah, it's fine like that. Um, can you see through it? You will be able to. Yeah. Okay. You gotta do like an alpha cutout. Yeah, I just Ooh. gotta like. I don't, okay, I'll be honest. I don't know if I like that big square bit in the middle. Mm. It might be too much you could probably oh you know what rather than making it uh, rectangular make it square like just like cut this? the yeah like that yeah eh, yeah whatever well, th those those side bits are a little uh too wide too i think I liked the the middle bit, like the grading and the ridge, but those two like long rectangular bits, they're just too blank, I feel. Which bits? These? Uh no, 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 no. It's it's the part of the middle bit that's not Oh, uh, this. Uh nope. This? Uh so that, that long rectangular bit, not the middle strip of it, but those two side panels on it. This. I can't click on it. This? No, the big the big, <laughs> the big oh, rectangular oh bit God. in the middle. Yes. Okay. The the ridges in the middle are fine, but those two rectangular oh. bits. They're they're too I, I, I feel yeah. You... They're too big for having that little of detail, right? Sure. Yeah. That yeah, that looks a lot better, um, and you could probably pull it in more to where it's like. Or more in the middle. maybe add some details to those other bits. No, because I, I visually I don't want them blocking the view under. True. Um, so I think pulling this 
more uh, square in the middle too. I think would be good. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. And then that uh, that middle bar could probably not be as wide too. Yeah, you know what else? There should be some kind of like... So I was gonna say like maybe a handle or something you could like move the grate with. In the mm, middle. No, it's it's too big for that. I mean... You oh wouldn't... yeah, yeah that would be, that would be too big. Yeah, mm. yeah. This is like a four by, you know, well no, I mean it, it's a... Let's see. So it's, like a, it's a whole floor panel. It's like a, a whole floor panel is this much actually. Um, so but they're usually we'll, but they're usually subdivided once. Are you working on so. things for the level here since doing, or is it for another? It is for what I'm working on. Um, yeah, it's based well, off. And of that's kind of the beauty of doing everything on a on a system, right? Is we can reuse it elsewhere yep. pretty easily too. We are going to use everything often. Yeah. Because, uh, again, we are two people. And the number of assets we can make is limited by the fact that we do not have unlimited time. Yep. So, the more versatile an asset or idea is, the better. Exactly. Speaking of which, I'm probably going to have to hop off of here in, you know, not right now, but in a bit. Ah, uh, yeah. Calling it a night. Yeah, get get pretty sleepy. You know, I got I got I got early things to do tomorrow. Got adult adult activities and responsibilities. Yeah. It's okay. I will I will hold the stream in your stead. <laughs> What's going on? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can do something with this. Maybe you know what? It might work. Maybe it just needs Actually, if this works, it'll be crazy. Uh oh, I might have turned that number up too high. It was nice knowing you. Oh, I made it. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Oh, why is that too much? Uh, that's right. Oh, negative skill is kind of a general no-no, but I'm gonna do it. So you said you're working on some stuff right now? What you working on, man? Who, me? No, not you. I'm talking to chat. Oh. I missed that message. Yeah, that was earlier. I also missed it. I'm reading back through now. I saw earlier um, that uh, Wolf Eye Studios acknowledged you. That was kind of cool. You're working on a 2D project, actually. Ooh, interesting. What kind of 2D project? 
would like to know about it. Figured I need to downscale a bit to keep working. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like what I was talking about um, a couple streams ago. It's like, you know, if you butt up against some some issues, sometimes it just kind of makes sense to downscale your projects, right? Uh, especially as you're learning. Not everything has to be the biggest, best game ever. It doesn't have to be your dream game. Um, in fact, if you want to make a living at making games, uh, making your dream game is kind of a really bad idea. Because um, you're going to want it to be your baby, right? You're never going to want to push that baby out into the world because it's never done developing. And um, spending five years working on a game that you think is going to be successful isn't really a good idea like you're better off like putting something out every like year or two um, and here we are not following that advice <laughs> it's the best you see now. What's that? We, give it. Kind of... we don't. We just we just give the advice. Yeah, we don't yeah, take yeah, it. yeah. We're we're advice gurus, right? Uh, we're like, you know, we're like influencers. Like, there's like types of influencers who like record themselves. Like, I'm going for a jog today, and then they like run ten steps down the road, and they get back in their car and they go home. It's just like you need to, you need to be your best self. And she's like, yeah, that advice is for you. I'm gonna work on my dream game until I drop dead. There's nothing you can do about it. Which uh, auto mod blocked the word "wog." It thought it was. You thought you were bullying us. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you might have invented a derogatory word. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, womb of wog is your dream game for sure, but you need to pivot. Yeah. Yeah, like, conceptually, I really liked it, um, but, yeah, it might just be too much too soon, man. Um, I mean, yeah, it. it's, that, that game is, is awesome, like, 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 that whole concept you've got with that is, is great, but yeah, it's gonna be... It, it, it'll be tough to make something like that, you know, it's ambitious, which is good, you know, I mean, what's the point of doing something that's not at least a little ambitious, but, but yeah, yeah, but it'll be tough. If you're making a game that already exists, like there's like a billion of them, and it's not to like learn how to make games, dude, what are you doing? There's already well, too I'd many say, games. I mean, there's never you never need to make something that's like just like everything else, right? I mean, you should always make something, you know, that's kind of different and something you're interested in. But and and I'm honestly, you know, I'm kind of thinking, of, you know, we should do this with like space, but a little more is just sort of loosen up on what it needs to be. Right. Like, you know, just don't be like, you know, it's gotta have, you know all these triple a features you know like let's just be like okay well what what's the simple version you know we'll make the simple version you know hopefully have some success from it and then later we can make the Ooh, you kind of cut out there uh -oh, yeah. yeah your uh your internet's giving out man might be my hardware i just i just hit bake Oh, that's that's a hundred percent it. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, Will's getting baked alive I'm, I'm along baking. with his <laughs> with his models. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really good idea to like pair everything back all the time, right? Because scope creep is very very real. Like, so even when you like pair your game back to its like most simple form. Chances are there's going to still be like a, a smidge of feature creep. It's just so hard not to do, especially with like a creative, 
creative thing. Like, an idea is always going to evolve. All right, well, here's our great. It's looking good. <laughs> I say we ship it just like this. Yeah, it's more than good. It's great. It's great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, I could definitely use that in this level. Yeah, yeah press nice. the ship button. Honestly, I don't know why we didn't do that earlier. Um, like Space Piff could have been done by now if we had just like thought of hitting the uh, the ship button on it, right? Definitely should have thought. The, of the that. hardest part of game dev is remembering where they hid the ship button in the engine, because mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know where that is, it won't finish the game for you, and then you have to make a whole game yourself. It's like a it's like an industry trade secret, you know. And there's like no tutorials on it, right? Because no one wants you to know how to ship your game by hitting that ship button and the make the game for you button. Because you know, then they lose their advantage. It's like you know, like the type of artist who would put out tutorials that are like wrong in order to like make the next generation of artists not as good as them. That's what we're doing. Honestly. That's what we're doing. That's that's, we're that's, here. that's actually what we're streaming. That's <laughs> the whole reason Skunk Ape Interactive does it, these streams is to show everything wrong and you know how to do everything incorrectly. And then behind closed doors, we're uh, actually making the game the right way. That way, the next generation of game developers who watch this stuff make nothing but bad games, and we don't have to compete with them. Big brain. Big brain stuff. It's the perfect plan. It's the perfect crime. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of digging this room. Feels kind of trippy. All yes. these curving bridges, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a perfect room to fight drones in. Chat GPT is the ship button, sort of. Make my game boom so done ship. True. Oh, man, yeah. Especially so depending true. on what type of game you want to make. I, I do dread the day that they come up with a, a 3D neural, you know, whatever. Oh, whatever yeah, they are. We're, <laughs> we're cooked. There's no games. We're, we're not shows. cooked, but like, yeah, just everything's going to be really lame. Yeah. yeah there's going to be no jobs and nothing interesting. I, man, yeah. I, I saw this like. I don't know what it was. I guess it was an ad for some SaaS product, but it was basically this guy being like, with our AI, you can automatically comment on people's LinkedIn posts. Ew. <laughs> it's just like, that's, oh, wow. That's so what we need, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. You know, out of all the things that I was hoping AI would improve about my life, the number one thing I wanted was to be able to churn out thousands and thousands of generic LinkedIn comments, right? It's like, you know, yeah, like I just wasn't getting enough comments. Like people people were having to just like use their brain to, to put a stupid comment on posts before. Yeah, like... Now they don't have to do that, you know, it's great. Before, you know... <laughs> We're really going to look back and miss the days when there was authentic corporate shill bootlickers in the comments, <laughs> just like praising like the layoffs and, 
you know, <laughs> wage cuts and <laughs> the CEOs getting all the like pay. <laughs> And you know, Chat GPT is just gonna replace that, right? So we won't even we won't even have like that authentic experience and we won't even really truly, be able to hate to anyone. Everything. Yeah. They're they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna take the hate away. And it's you know, that's not fair. I think as a society, we need those people to collectively bash because then we're just gonna turn on each other if we don't have that, right? That's right. If you don't, I mean, if that's, you that's don't the plan. If you don't have someone who is just objectively wrong and awful, you know, who are you going to get mad at? Your fellow man. That's right. And that's why we make games that no one likes. <laughs> that's why we make a game called Deadlock eight years before Valve. So everyone can get mad at it that it so isn't. You can have a, a human to be mad at. That's <laughs> right. Oh man. This room would lean really well to jetpack shootouts with Jones. Yeah, yeah, dude. We're we're thinking about like adding that kind of like not like a a boost pack, but like a, a glide type thing where you could like slow your descent. So you could be like slowly falling down and like jumping between bridges and you know shooting some drones in the air. That'd be very really cool. I turn away so many LinkedIn posts because I don't have the time. Okay, but that's an insane situation that I'd like think like what the hell, man? Oh man, yeah. Well, I mean, there's just not enough names left for games, you know? It's like we've gone through every noun in the English language. Right, I mean, to be fair, one of two of my favorite games ever are both named Prey. Yeah, and then they have nothing to do with each they other. They have nothing to do with each other. It's just they acquired the, the name. But in our case, uh, Valve didn't even acquire the name. They just... It's just like change, lower and lower case, which I, case. I guess they can do because you know they own the platform the games on, um, and we didn't copyright the name, so whatever. The timing is so weird though, because like we just paid our publisher today to get the rights back to it, and. Uh, th we had been like talking about it for like a couple weeks with our publisher and then all of a sudden we get all this news about deadlock which very very odd circumstance um, yeah very very odd I'm really digging the bridge room do we go do we go one more up do we do one more level of bridge nah that'd be too many also, the whole point is to, like, kind of end up having it be the same level as, like, that secret area there. Rafael Colantonio is so freaking salty about the prey name situation, and he is right. Yeah, dude, imagine! Imagine you work on a game that is, like, a cult classic and loved by a lot of people, uh, to the point where uh, they were working on a sequel, Prey 2, which looked amazing, by the way. It looked really, really cool. It had, like... It was it was basically what people wanted from uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, right? It was just, like, this, like, sci-fi parkour bounty hunting game that looked really, really good. And uh, it just got cancelled for a number of reasons, but... Uh, people still really like the original Prey, and the original Prey had like a lot of cool ideas, uh, things like portals and like shrinking you and like having you walk on ceiling and uh, handled death in an interesting way, where you became like this like uh, Native American like spirit with like a spirit bow and just a lot of cool weapons and everything. The entire concept of the all the, all the, the weapons were alive. Yeah, all the weapons like everything about that universe was very very interesting and cool and they had plans for it and, you know it didn't work out but now this like new game comes along 
with the same name as yours and as a result people are just going to completely always overlook your game and it's just going to go to the back burners of history and there's no opportunity for any new people to to play it right so yeah understandably very very salty about that and yeah so it was, i think it was just bethesda had acquired the title and owned the ip um and arcane was already working on prey and i think they wanted they wanted to name it something i don't remember what they wanted to name it but um you know one word snappy titles market well because they're they're easy to remember uh so bethesda was like okay we're just gonna use the same title right very odd i've never seen anything like that before and i think it kind of sets this like weird precedence right I completely agree that Prey sequel looked excellent, and it doesn't help that Ubisoft burned it by forcing the Might and Magic IP on Arcs of Talos 2. It just hurts my soul. Oh, ew. Because, I mean, at least Prey was pretty much exactly what Colantonio wanted before the name change they had to do. It should load to Arcs 2, and it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. There is... Again, peak peak example of like what's wrong with the industry it's like dumb dumb decisions like that like you can't even come up with creative names anymore the good thing about captain mcspacepiff is i don't think anyone at any point is going to try and steal this name <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They better not. Can I not select both of these at the same time? Okay, I can. Thank you! Thank you! I think Captain McSpacepiff is a great name, too. Um, I'm biased because, you know, I helped come up with the name, but... At least it's not, I don't know. Spaceman Biff or Captain of Space McBiff or whatever that awful is just Space, was. a story of Biff. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Space Captain McBiff. Oh, dude, I don't, like, it was very hard to, to be nice about that. Biff, Biff Legends Requiem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some less than great ideas out there, and... A lot of times they'll they'll come from people who mean well. Well, I've just been spending ten years like talking about game ideas to people, you know, like some like stuff that I'm you know working really hard on, and and, and they're just like, I have a game idea, and then they like, proceed to oh just my. like regale me with like like just the <sighs> worst ideas. Yeah, it's, it's the worst thing know. you've ever heard of. <laughs> and it's like, for one, the scope is insane, right? Like, it's something that's, like, completely undoable. Um, or, or it's just like, they're like, I want to make a bad. game where you're a squirrel and you're getting ready for winter. So you've got to, you know, you've got to hide all the acorns. And then there's a memory wipe and you forget where they are. And so you've got to find them again. <laughs> You know, and it's just like... That sounds like the indie hit of the year, to be honest. To be honest, it does. And that but doesn't mean it's good. I don't want to make <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, oh man. Oh boy, another cozy game? Oh, good. 
Don't want to be cozy. It's like, geez, I can't... I can't wait to, like, see my entire feed filled with this game that has essentially zero gameplay. Yeah. It's like, it's not to say that, you know, those games don't have a place in the industry, but... Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, I just don't care about it. You know? I like, just don't care. Not, yeah, it's like... I'm not, why, I'm why, not it's like everything, you know? everything I've told you about the game I'm making right now. What makes you think like... Oh yeah, he's going to want to abandon the idea that he's working on. And then make this like... Game idea I have with no concept of like... Mechanics or functionality. It's just like... It comes off as well-meaning, but it's also just like... I I've never heard of it, that happening anywhere else, right? That's like a game dev specific thing. Where, it, like, yeah, you don't... It, it kind of happens to other other professions. Like, like you know, like like doctors. If someone's like, oh, you're a doctor? Well, I've got this weird itch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but that's like... You're asking for that person's... <laughs> You're asking for that person's advice on something, not, hey, you should do this. <laughs> like, yeah, that's insane I guess it's a to me. Different. Like, you don't go to your mechanic and go, hey, yeah, so you you should you should replace the engine. Uh, I, I've got an idea for a car. <laughs> I've got an idea for a car. Or, you know, it's like, oh, you're a you're you're working on a painting right now i think okay i guess no you know what i lied i guess that is a thing because uh <laughs> artists all the time are just like can you draw me <laughs> oh, wow. it's just like dude no first of all you're gross second of all uh i'm in the middle of working on something that's like has <laughs> artistic quality to it right I'm not going to Man. abandon it just to like do a crappy portrait of someone I like literally just met. You're just like destroying this person that neither of us know. Oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say any names, but this person's very real. This is a real person. Oh, yeah. And they're everywhere, too. I think it's because it's such a technologically demanding thing that people who have ideas but can't do it get super excited that they meet someone again. That's yeah, true. And, okay. And you know, we're we're not being fair because honestly I do love hearing people's ideas for stuff. Right, it's right. Just, you yeah, know it's I don't know. It's just the audacity. <laughs> it's like I'm I not. Guess, like, I, I'm I, like I love I'm, hearing people's ideas, but I want to reserve the right to be like, "Wow, that's ridiculous." Right, right. That that's kind of my point too. It's like, if you're gonna tell me your idea, you have to be willing to accept criticism on it, and they almost never do. Right? When I like even try to come to it from like an like a game design analytical standpoint, and just like. It's like, okay, there's there's some elements that you could work with there and like make a kind of, you know, interesting game. Like when someone who knows nothing about game design pitches their idea to you, they don't know anything about the process, right? They just have something they thought up based off of like other games they played or like something out in the zeitgeist. But every time someone's done that and I've like come to them with like, a way to kind of shape it into a more feasible thing or even like try and convince them like okay there's some steps you could take to like do this yourself they never want to hear it right they they just like having the idea and they think your their idea is good enough that you would kind of just like fall over backwards and like make their idea which yeah i mean i still love hearing the idea but if you're not willing it to depends. accept any... some some of them yeah i like hearing some of them yeah well i made this little great it, it's, it's looking, okay i like it it's looking okay send it on yeah. over yeah well i think i'm gonna have to call it quits 
here because it's getting a little a little late. Yeah, but... We can use that next time. But, yeah. Uh, I'll probably keep the stream going for another hour, just hang out and work on some stuff. Sweet, but, uh, dude. Yeah, dude, great having you. It's always fun. Um, I think we should do these joint streams more often. Yeah, yeah, this is fun. This is fun. It's like just kind of hanging out and just chilling out and working. I like it's, it. It's it's old school style development, basically. Yeah, you know, basically. It's, it's maybe not as productive as like, just, you know, sitting on your own and focusing on something, but I like the creative element of like kind of the back and forth. <laughs> we've already uh, made the great pun multiple <laughs> yeah, times. Yeah, we've yeah. we've worn it out. It's it's too it's like, late. Uh, it's like what was it? It's just like yeah, it's it's great. Get it? It's it's great. It's or, great. It's, it's great. And, oh no, sorry, sorry. It's good. And then later, <laughs> it's like actually, you know what? It's not just good. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 to make matters even worse, we've been making greats for for many years, long before I was a dad, and I was making the great puns when I when I hadn't earned they, the, they uh, were some great puns, when I hadn't though. earned the dad joke you know <laughs> medal yet. Listen, I I haven't. Here I am right there. I'm right there with you, man. Stolen valor. Stol <laughs> stolen valor. <laughs> I can't make dad jokes without it you being can't stolen make dad valor. Jokes you have a kid. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. that was the rules. You got a good point. Well. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on that note. All right. Um. Yeah. I guess I'll just hop out of this chat and good luck with sorting out the technical issues that entails. <laughs> All right, man. Well. See ya. All right. Bye. How's that? Is that looking okay? Yeah, now now you get the you get the full you get the full level design experience. No more no more great puns in the way. I'm so lonely. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that co-op stream is—it's uh, a pretty cool concept, and it's something I don't really see anyone doing on Twitch. Um, probably because people generally have their own Twitch account. Now that I think about it, um, but here at Skunkape Interactive, we're we're a. Uh, we're a joint venture. Hmm. Hmm. That's a problem. Uh. Yeah, that's that, you know walkable bridges are a little overrated, right? <laughs> Who doesn't love having to like fight, <laughs> fight for your life, like trying to climb a bridge? You know what? With it being the curved type bridge, I don't think I can do that. Not without having more surface area. <laughs> they ordered the bridge, but they asked for the wrong length, so they had to bend it to fit. Dude, that sounds like something the Soviet Union would do, right? Just like, go at it with a bunch of hammers and just like, like look you know bridges it 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 does everything it was requested to do it crosses the gap it allows a walkable service and if you're not able to cross it that just means you're weak right typical moonian shenanigans i know man just well also it's like this entire like building just doesn't make sense right 
It's like, why are... Why are these, like, back and forth bridges and, like, just circularly going up this shaft? Like, it should just be a stairwell that goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Or, like, an elevator of some kind. But no. It's this incredibly dangerous, like, open industrial shaft that you could, like, slip and fall 40 stories. <laughs> like, if Captain McSpacebiff wasn't, like... A badass with indestructible shins uh, he would die from that fall we were making some great puns earlier but uh, this room's gonna have some giant fans on the ceiling so uh, you're gonna have to get ready for some some other terrible dad jokes of just like ah, I'm a big fan of these ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that's gonna get really old very very fast so prepare yourself I'm giving you ample warning it's not gonna happen on this stream though um Let's see. Hmm. 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 That's kind of a problem. I don't want you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Man, one of these days I'll get rid of this cough. Okay. Can you jump up from there? Not be able to, but then the ceiling in the next room is going to be too low. So I want this probably that level. Yeah. Otten, welcome to the stream. How you doing, man? Good to have you here. You, you kind of, ah, oh man, you like just missed out. Uh, Will and I were doing a uh, cooperative stream where uh, he was working on some modeling and I was working on some level design. Uh, Worth. This was like kind of our first test to do something like that, but it's something we might uh, do a little more often moving forward. Probably on like Friday nights, maybe like uh, eight to 11 streams. Yeah, how you been, man? How's uh, how's that laptop of yours holding up? I know you're having some, some trouble with it. You're working on some animations and 3D modeling. Nice, dude. Nice, glad to hear that you're uh, sticking at it. We're gonna move this halfway up. Right. Nope. Yeah, right, right, right. Nope. Perfect, first try. You also fixed the FPS problem. Dude, nice. What was the issue? Now you got some really smooth animations. Yeah, yeah, uh, animating at 24 frames a second is not ideal. So I'm glad you were able to fix your computer and get some, uh, get some smooth animations going. I was stupid. That was the issue. Hey, man, that's that is a sentiment I am far too familiar with. I am eighty percent of the problems I I butt up against are just me doing stuff wrong. You can set, <coughs> dude. That's what I was saying. Like uh, for the longest time, I animated all my blender animations at like 24 frames a second because I didn't know how to change the number, right? 
So all the animations uh, in root were 24 frames a second. That's so funny. Yeah, I've I've quite literally been in your shoes, so don't don't feel too ashamed about it. It's such an easy thing to miss too. What engine do you use, Otten? From some cook blender, or do you use them in blender? Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, some cook. Generally speaking, most people don't do animations uh, in engines. Generally, they have some sort of like proprietary software that they use, uh, or just like any kind of third-party software. Um, like. A lot of people will probably either use Maya or um, Blender for their animations. You can animate in like Unreal or Unity, um, and some people do it and it works for them, but generally speaking you have a lot more control in third party software and uh, the rigging and scaling and everything is just a little bit better. Pers like personally to me how do I want to do this this is a very weird shape to like cut up and fix I could, I could do it like that Hmm. We're using a regular wall piece. Break that. Okay, I was smart enough to like make those vertices like a little bit smaller to avoid Z fighting. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. I'm actually like digging the look of like this little like drop pit and like the stairs down to the to the bridge I like it I like it a lot it happens to the best of us absolutely yeah I mean I've been animating for 10 years 10 plus and you know still stuff like that all the time messes me up uh, a problem I had recently was like with OBS where the window was just showing over everything all the time and for the life of me I couldn't figure out how to like stop it so I'm like surely there's a like an option somewhere in OBS that's saying you know show on top all times and I couldn't find it and it turns out there's like right there in the file it says file show on top you just click it and it goes away but yeah I spent like hours like researching like how to get rid of it and it was right there in front of me the whole time so. we're all only human stuff happens all the time and you know sometimes you just gotta laugh at yourself and move on um, I animated all my animations in 24 FPS and I just realized it was 24 the whole time. So that means that 24 FPS can actually look very smooth and unreal. I've been animating for four months, getting used to Blender, it's very easy. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, so just because it's showing 24 FPS uh, in the program you're using to animate, that doesn't actually mean the animation is rendering at 24 FPS. Uh, all that means is you have 24 frames of data to animate with. Um, and what I also mentioned is sometimes it's actually really good because it makes movements snappier. Um, so it's like really good for like punching and like impact. Because um, when you like bump it up to like 64 FPS, that's, that's more potential points of information, but We're all human, so it's more potential to mess it up, right? But yeah, it it, it runs it back in whatever frame rate the uh, the engine is playing. It's just those points of frame data that it's like 
using. Uh, gotcha, I've used Godot's animation player just because I don't have any super demanding animations to do, just sword swings, but now that I'm working on it in 2D, it should be pretty optimal just because the engine is so much more suited for 2D. Yeah, Simcook, um, yeah, so forget what I said earlier. Uh, when it comes to like animating 2D, uh, engines are, are pretty good at it, right? Uh, well, depending on what type of animation you want to do, um, obviously like something like pixel art, you're going to have to like hand draw, but even then there's like programs that you can use. In a speed based character that goes 500 miles an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Otten, it, since your characters like move so fast in your games, um, having those like lower, uh, FPS, uh, for animation, not FPS, but uh, 24 frames for animating. Uh, it's going to allow people to like catch those movements snappier. Because uh, if you just make it have so much data and they're just moving so fast, uh, if there's like a lot of nuance and like movements in between points, chances are they're gonna miss a lot of stuff, right? Oh, you do pixel art too? That's cool. Yeah, no, uh, you had mentioned that uh, you have a, a process for starting in pixel art and then moving up to a higher uh, resolution and concept, which I thought was so interesting because I've never seen anyone go from a low poly idea to a high poly, right? Like generally as, an, as a game industry standard, what a lot of people do is they'll start with like a high detail concept uh well not a high detail but like a like a kind of a rougher concept but i've never seen anyone start so low as like pixel art and then go to like you know high detail concept art that's really really interesting i've seen a lot of people go the other way um when they're making like a pixel art game they'll like draw something out and then you know they try and like take that idea and like crunch it down into 2D uh, pixel sprites. Still very cool. To me, when it comes to learning, I go by one thing. Excellence is not art. It's pure habit. We are what we repeatedly do. Absolutely, dude. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the best things when it comes to art or to be honest, any trade is consistency. Right? Even the most talented person, um, if they do not practice, it is uh, it is going to get away from them. Um, even the sharpest blades, you know, if you do not if you do not consistently sharpen them, they will eventually dull and what trades are you gotta you gotta keep on it wow that's why you made 500 characters to keep your skills in check for pixel art that is a lot of characters man i mean good on you i don't think i've even thought of 500 characters I'll come up with like five characters and then uh, I make a whole game about them. Like this guy. <laughs> or uh, that guy down there. One to six a day to keep them in check. Oh man, that sounds brutal. <laughs> biffed, yeah. Yeah, get biffed, dude. The bots don't know what's coming for them. Let's do the wall half here.
So if y'all are just now joining the stream, uh, what we're working on is a kind of dungeon environment for McSpace Biff. Uh, this is kind of an underground level that's part of an overall larger open world experience. Um, currently I'm working on kind of an area that's working the player further, further up into the dungeon itself. Um, last stream we were talking about ways to like spruce up the dungeon environment so they're less monotonous. Um, what we're probably going to do here is add a couple different uh, varieties of just area. So anything from like a scientific lab to like a generator room to maybe like a terrarium of some kind. Um, but the general vibe and idea of this whole area is this is a kind of defunct Soviet uh, underground facility and it is falling apart at the seams like sand is like pouring in in every orifice it and you know robots are going haywire things are malfunctioning steam's going to be like shooting out of like all these pipes and everything and the problem is despite it being in disarray it's still rapidly producing these guys who are terrorizing the surrounding area and uh worse than that the uh the facility itself has been abducting these colonists and trying to convert them to uh their soviet faction so you're here to rescue those colonists and shut down this facility altogether In this room is going to be like uh, almost like an HVAC room so there's gonna be some giant fans on the ceiling and like some pipes and like generators and stuff and also I'm thinking um, there's gonna be like spots in this level where there's just like uh, like steel rails like going across the ceiling with like cranes essentially uh, holding these guys very similar to like um, some of the combine levels in like Half Life, where you like go into their like facility where they're like, you know, converting all those like humans, um, and you just kind of like see them on those like hanging conveyor belts. Gotta get some good robot manufacturer areas in there, absolutely, dude. Um, anything from like conveyor belts to like uh, cranes to robot generators. Uh, we were also talking about like building these like points on the walls that are like uh, like holes that uh, the drone character can like come out of. Whoa, that guy's huge. That's not the right one. <laughs> There he is. There's our boy. That's that's more correct. Didn't mean to show you uh, the beefy drone boss. But yeah, like having like little little round points in the walls where these guys are getting generated, and then um, similar to like skag holes from uh, Borderlands or like bug holes from like Hell Divers. Yeah, you'll be able to like either like shoot them or like throw a grenade at them and stop them from spawning anymore making animations is very relaxing because blender has a built-in stress reliever where you can just pose your character and then make them dance to whatever music you're listening to <laughs> dude yeah absolutely um yeah speaking of making your character dance to uh whatever music you have <laughs> <laughs> made this a little while ago for all of our backers uh and followers so if anyone follows you'll see this little guy dance to like some music from one of our other games yeah boy yeah absolutely even if it's just as simple as two giant metal rectangles smacking together and producing a robot and then like a jump start. Yeah, dude. Um, something that comes to mind is like the um, the droid production plant from Star Wars Episode Two, 
where you had like all those like different like machines fabricating the the droids and then like at the end you know it spits them out uh something like that could be very very cool and that would be that would be so simple right because uh what you could do is just have something like you know, you'd like take a mesh and then uh, do like a boolean to have them like cut it out in some squares. And then, you know, you see it empty at some points and they come together and then you could add like a material to like turn it red to like heat it up, do some steam effects. And then when it opens, it's just those guys posed and ready to go. Like that would actually be interesting. Um, we do... <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot about this thing. So this is something we're we're gonna we're gonna put this in like the uh one of our other like open world levels, right? Um, but essentially this is going to be like a, whoop, scale too big. Like a watchtower for these guys. It's gonna have like tarps and stuff hanging from it. Pretty cool, very Star Wars-y. Yeah, like there's there's a lot of stuff uh, of McSpaceBiff that we just kind of haven't shown because it's it's not a hundred percent together. But you know, one of these days, one of these days we'll show everything. I'm trying to find like just the mesh, right? Oh, yeah, that's why. It's because they technically use the same mesh as... The other guys, it's just a material difference. What are they going to do? Uh, what? Acid action, that's what they're going to do. Export. That's not where you want to do exports. Not to my pictures folder. That's dumb. <laughs> I'm going to put it here in proxy meshes. I'm sure, I probably already have one here. Export. Oops. I did that wrong. Uh, bah, 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 bah. There we go. Sorry, guys. My my brain is dying. Here's what we want to do. Where is the SKM Moonbot? There it is. Let me just delete this default cube. Yeah, but the idea is Oops. Well basically what you could do is 
obviously I'm not going to use this in the game because that would be a bad idea. Do like a, like a boolean modifier. Oh, you know what? That what would probably look more correct is if uh, this was actually more like over here, right? Because you want to show. This is like a very sloppy way to do this, <laughs> and I would not recommend. This is a really bad way to do that anyway. Um, what you'd want to do is like sculpt it in, but I was gonna try and show like a quick and dirty way. But yeah, basically make it look like a printing press. Um, uh, I'm stupid. I actually just now figured out like a better way to do it. File, import, FBX, uh, blah, 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 proxy measures. Boom. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Planning on making it look like a printing press. Yep. It makes parts for the robots. So what are some special technical considerations you guys had to learn or read up on for making an open world game? Maybe little nuances about how the engine handles it or doesn't. So, um, you know, compared to um, Unity, Unreal just kind of is built to handle open world games out of the box, right? Um, they have like different types of world partitions. Um, and essentially it like streams in different uh, bits of the level, right? So you work in like these like chunks or like different areas. Um, and using things like alpha brushes on the landscape, you could do like super, super detailed uh, landscape modeling. Um, and it just streams it and loads in between those different zones. Um, at some point when I'm working in the uh, open world level, I'll show you guys kind of like how it works. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It didn't really take a lot of effort. Um, there was so much work that went into having um,
having it work in uh, Unity, because Unity just, to be honest, was not really built. open world uh, first person shooters. And then what you would do is you would like stitch that to the rest, right? So you would like see like the internal print. Yeah, and funny enough, you wouldn't even like see the leg, like if it worked that way. But we would probably like, in reality, push the leg in a little bit, just like to visually make more sense. Anyway, you could do like a robot printer block like that. There's a couple ways you could do it. It's, it's not really something you would do like super, super quick, um, but that would be like a quick way to like have a start up. So you have materials queuing up and they like smack together. Yeah, exactly. Like it's like filling. Like, uh, I'm thinking what they would do is they would like smash together and then there'd be like a tube to like pour molten lava in and then there could be like another point uh down the line uh where they are just like a singular color and then you could do like different steam effects of like different colors spraying them and then like have their material fade in so it looks like they're being painted but again a lot of effort for a one-off that said, um, if we're going to make those like little remote robot fabricators where you can control them, that's like something you could use every time, right? Like essentially you have these like fabricator stations where you uh, try to take control of the robot and it has to like 3D print them every time. And it could be like a miniaturized version of that where it like clamps them and then, you know, sprays the color and everything on them. And then you take control of them to like do puzzles and stuff. We could redo it. And also uh, the bit about them like having their paint added is not terribly complex because essentially what you would do is um, what you would probably do is you'd have an overlay material put on them and then fade out that overlay material like like a splotchy overlay material and it eventually hits like zero opacity. And then you just see their regular paint and then, you know, the, the steam effect that looks like paint just turns off. That's like one way you could do it. Not a bad idea, actually. Because that's something we would use a lot. So for those of you uh, who are tuning in tonight and weren't here yesterday, um, we're going to have a lot of puzzles in uh, McSpace Fifth that require two players. Uh, since Mixspace Fifth is a co-op game, uh, but we want those. Oh god, I forgot I added these guys. Can I punch them? Oh, ah, we we'll get biffed. Get biffed, dude. Um. Anyway, so we're gonna have a lot of pu uh, puzzles in the game that are gonna require two people, whether it be like them holding a lever as another person like walks through, and then you know whatever. Uh, but in order to allow single player people to do those puzzles, we're gonna have like these like stations where you can fabricate uh, a remote control version of these guys. Uh, so you can swap back and forth between them at any given time. And uh, there's gonna be this mechanic where you can throw uh, either your friend or one of those bots uh, up to places that you can't reach and vice versa. And uh, yeah, I think that's a 
kind of cool way to handle it. You know, there, there's not going to be any timing involved with these puzzles. Um, so a single person switching back and forth between the two, uh, you know, it might take a little longer than like playing with a friend, but it's still definitely possible. Would be funny if right after they shocked them to life, they had like little reactions right after we were like looking around in fear, slowly starting to lock. Look at the hands, the moon, and things, blah, 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 weird bugs. So they give them another little shock to make them docile. But they're too stupid to realize that they're creating sentient life with their tech and the robots are like legitimately perceiving reality. That would be kind of funny. But the Moonian doesn't even know it, and they're just thinking there's a glitch. Uh, that would then fuel the idea that maybe one of the drones that maybe flew away before they could shock the sentients out of it. He just got terrified and immediately flew into a near vent, and it's just sitting there. That's a kind of cool concept. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It doesn't quite mesh with some story stuff that we have planned. I don't want to talk about it too, too much, um, but essentially the Soviet Munion, uh, there, there is sentient AI, but it's not really these guys, right? I mean, these guys have a little bit of personality, um, and they, they can kind of think for themselves a little bit, but not... Not really enough to like form emotions or anything. Um, they'll have like personality, but they're not gonna like run from you, right? Because the whole commentary is like a communist collective doesn't really think for, like an individual in a communist collective is not designed to think for itself. But on top of that, there is like a a supercomputer that is kind of controlling all these guys. It's not 100% aware of like what they're doing at all times and it's not connected to all of them, but it is the one that's like giving them uh, commands and orders and is like stationing them at different places. Yes, so that could be a thing where the drone is like inherited uh, lines of sentience like it's it's accidental right and you know it's kind of the whole thing where it's like you give enough monkeys typewriters they're eventually going to make Shakespeare so you eventually fabricate enough fairly intelligent uh, robots you know, odds of one of them developing sentience is kind of high. But it starts just as you find him terrified in the event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. It's like they started by um, trying to replace these robots with people, right? Like dumping their brains in, like. There was like metal skeletons and they found that to not be very efficient because they were hard to control or they just died from the shock of being put in a metal body. So then they started like up the sentience of the robots and they finally realized like that's a bad idea because then they're harder to control. So they just give them just enough cognition to be able to like order them around and stuff. <clears throat> I dig in this room. I mean, there's not a lot going on right now, but kind of cool. Can I? I think I'm gonna... I think we gotta do that. Hmm. No, 
that bit doesn't look good. That'd be a terrible bridge design. I take it back. I'm not doing that. Undo, please. 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 Please undo. There we go. Got scared for a moment. Yeah, I think this room will look even better once there's like a fan at the top and you see like the light casting down. You know what? While we're at it, I think I'll go ahead and add a spotlight into this room. Put it out in the middle. Uh, attenuation radius is probably three. Ooh, even more. Five thousand. Huh? What is going on? Why is it not? It's not casting the light. That's very weird. Not sure why. Question. Big glasses or small glasses for a nerd character you're working on? Dude. Big glasses. Big glasses for nerds is like a classic trope, right? Um, now, for someone who is Someone who's wise, you go small spectacles. Like someone like a like a wise old sage, you do like the small little like like curved spectacles like right on the edge of the nose. It's, that's for like wise old wizards or like owl type characters. Uh, but nerds, big old glasses, big old honkers. Make it look like uh, like two fish bowls are like right on their face, right? Just like. Bah! All right, I will give her big ones. Glasses, right? You mean glasses, right? <laughs> yes, glasses. <laughs> In quotations, glasses. Cause like, cause like, her eyes are up there. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Jeez. <laughs> oh, this stream's gonna be the death of me, man. <laughs> I can't handle y'all. Um. Right. I was gonna add another light, but. Okay, this one's working. I wonder if it's just because like the outer cone angle was not. No, the other one just definitely wasn't casting. Oh, you know what? I might have had it right above the ceiling. That's what it was. Okay, you know, 
commenting on what we were saying earlier, how everyone, you know, can make stupid little mistakes. That's a stupid little mistake. You know, I was fiddling with... <laughs> I fiddled with the, like, light settings for, like, ten minutes. And I'm just like, why? Why is this light, like, not shining? Like, I'm... I'm adjusting the attenuation radius, I'm I'm adjusting the intensity, the cone angle, the color, and I'm just like, this, this spotlight isn't showing, and then, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, because it's right above my ceiling. I'm a dingus. That's why. So, yeah, don't, don't feel bad about making dumb mistakes, because, uh, it's gonna happen gonna happen to you at some point you just gotta you just gotta acknowledge it and keep moving does this cast shadows yes do these cast shadows probably not I guess the blueprint dingus language man uh my apologies, this is a, uh, I forgot to mention that this should have been a, uh, PG, PG-13 stream. I'm gonna use a couple no-no words here and there. Uh, what? <coughs> <coughs> Okay, the, the quote, glasses are bigger now. It's now the exact size of her eyes. Cool. I think you make them bigger, though. Glasses that are bigger than, like, the character's eyes are always, like, a peak, like, nerd look, right? saying is like a, a classic nerd like look is like you do like you know character right and you do like the glasses like wow wow There you go, like, peak nerd character. Boom, boom. That's every Twitch streamer, nerd. <laughs> oh, you love that gun, dude? Yeah, precision shots from those towers. Yeah, it's it's meant to be like a kind of universal uh, rifle. So it's like kind of not descript like when it comes to uh, like faction or anything. Anything from like the nomads to the colonists to the moon bots can use this. Um, it's a lever action carbine. Uh, so it like spools the energy wheel and ejects the laser shell. But yeah, it's kind of cool. I like it. Yeah, we needed a medium to long range weapon, so I think that's gonna fit the role of that. And then, um, oh, that's not it. Mm 
Do we not have it? It's Friday. Oh. Guess not. I need to have these cast shadows at some point, but there's another battle for a different day. You see binocular shaped glasses. <laughs> I will just pull up the OG Captain McSpace Biff project. Well, not the OG one, but the uh, the one we were making in Unity back in like 2023. Here's a gun I wanna show off. Will you drop some enemies to fight your way through at some point and see how the level feels for combat? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some areas that um, I'm not as concerned with, with like how they will play. Also, um, I've tested a lot of the enemies in a lot of these types of environments already. So I kind of have an idea of how they play and feel in certain enclosures already just by having done it hundreds and hundreds of times um but i am definitely going to add more enemies in at, at some point to, to test them but like yeah the, these guys i'm i'm testing as i build this oh okay yeah so here's the unity project uh, speaking of, here's a. So like graphically, it's not, you know, visually it's not all that different. Like we put, that said, we put a lot of work in making it look good in Unity, right? Oh um, uh, yeah, there's like one of those like rail type situations that I was talking about. Boombots would be on it. This is a level I will um, come back to. Um, this is in Unreal, actually, and uh, I need to recreate the the whole level using um, the games like uh, landscape modifier. Yeah, the style's always been there, right? Like, we had a very distinct vision on, like, what it looks like. Uh, the tech, the paper texture is kind of blown out here, probably just because it's not... Uh, it's, like, a bit too much, right? Like, everything shouldn't have that much paper grid to it, but... Um, you know, you go back to, like, like Space Piff, and there's, like... A little bit of it there, right? It's like more so. I think overall it looks a lot better in um, Unreal. I mean, this is a really bad example because it's like a gray box right now, but. Anyway, um. 
Oh boy, it has been a while since I've fortune unity. Aha! This is what I was looking for. So this is a uh, quad barrel shotgun. It's like, Harrison, what do you mean it's a quad barrel shotgun? Well, let me, let me show you. Boom. I picked the wrong pivot point. Uh, there we go. It's going to snap back like that. And then all of a sudden it's a quad barrel. And then uh, these bits will raise up to cover the holes. And then boom, 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 quad barrel. And then you can fold it back out into a two barrel and it switches to slugs and it fires further. Kind of cool concept. Question, how much does transparent mats take if I put them on the glasses mats? I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask about that, considering uh, our glass material was like super gunked up in uh, Space Biff, and I still haven't taken the time to figure it out. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I put a lot of effort into like designing this shotgun, but yeah, like even like the... Uh, the sights, right? So it has to like work uh, underneath, but like these bits of the sights uh, will end up like snapping back and meshing exactly with that. And then the like little sight there has like a little divot that I can go down into. How many polygons is this? Um, this is 6,000 verts, right? But this isn't optimized. Um, but 6,000 verts for like a gun is not that crazy, right? Like, these barrels would very definitely be, uh, optimized more 6,000 are you crazy <laughs> yeah like yeah this is a lot for a weapon right um but when you're designing something you don't really worry about the the polygons right because this isn't this isn't the mesh that we'd use this is like the like quick bang out concept like so many verts in this would be optimized but uh, in modern AAA games, Yeah, the average poly count uh, for guns is about four to six thousand these days. More so for like a triple A game. Arma three, which is a six year old game. Goodness gracious, weapons have about ten k polys, so. Yeah, to be honest, 6K is like perfectly fine. And to be honest, um, with modern game engines, vertices aren't like super um, important anymore.
Yeah, I want to use this too. Um, obviously, we got to do like a more detailed pass and get the mechanics and everything working for it. But yeah, like I think it's it's pretty cool looking. Pretty cool looking weapon. Um. Yeah, just boom, and then. <laughs> oh no, it's pointing back at me. And then these bits uh, slide back down into it. This is the bit I'm not like 100% on. I don't know if it looks good or not. So this would probably want to be changed, but yeah, I think it. I think it looks like okay. Yeah, it's like, it's like, little boop. And then, you know, when you reload it, it's, uh, bah, 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 bah. hold on, hold on, hold on. That's how you would reload it as a quad barrel. Just boop, 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 boop. Or if it's, you know, a two barrel, still. Ooh. What? Oh, yeah, the pivot is like. Whatever. Whatever, 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 whatever. You know. Anyway. Cool shotgun. Um, throwback to the quad barrel that was in the original mixed base piff. I like the concept of this a lot. <coughs> My dude, what am I saying? I'm not gonna save that. It's old as crap. Yeah, very, very satisfying weapon. So um, the original concept for McSpace Biff is every gun has a two operation mode. Um, we were very inspired by Bloodborne and we just really liked that weapons had multiple utilities, right? So quad to double barrel is like one of the easiest solutions. Um, but the, the Magnum itself, This guy real quick. Okay. So if you notice that like green carapace that's on the revolver, um that's actually like a secondary mode that you could like activate and it turns it to mag mode. So mag mode is a uh, magnet acceleration gun. So uh, essentially what it does is those coils will start generating electricity and then um, what it does you still fire the weapon uh, normally but it turns it into a Mac gun right it accelerates the bullet even faster through the barrel and it superheats the barrel but it basically turns the weapon into a rail gun for like a single shot and then uh, the gun has to like cool off a lot before you can fire it again otherwise like the barrel will blow up um so it would be like a, a mode you could toggle by like hitting the button on the front of it and then it would just like shake very violently and you could get like a single shot off and they would like get really hot and you have to wait to like do another shot again um and we were thinking it would probably dump the whole clip right like it would spin the revolver and it would shoot all six uh, bullets through at the same time. Um, so it essentially turns it into like a 50 cal sniper rifle. Two modes, two weapons.
yeah yeah i really really like that concept um same thing with this weapon right um thinking you could probably do like burst fire with it right just by like holding the uh switch back it would just turn into like a burst rifle so go from like a, a single shot carbine to more like a <coughs> excuse me like a battle rifle from halo so just like like three shots three shots three shots or just one two three so depending on how you want to use it um I have another question about the glasses. How do you put glasses on a character that has no ears? Just put ears in them. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. So, if they're a character with no ears, what I would recommend doing is, I don't know what their, their physiology is like, right? But you could just do the classic, like, it's just the little nose bit. And it's just the rounds, right? Um, that said, you, you could still probably like have them go out past the face without there being any any years right I think that'd be fine I do delete that <laughs> excuse my mouse drawings they're they're less than less than great Yeah, yeah, you have a couple options when it comes to designing a character with uh, no ears that has glasses. Um, I feel like there's a couple Zelda characters that are like that. Or like Animal Crossing. Yeah, perfect example. Raymond. Like, he's, he technically has ears, but uh, you just put the glasses, like, on their face. Right? It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't get the glasses themselves past the head, just have the glasses uh, cover the face. It's something anime does a lot, where it's just like, just the spectacles. It just has to get the idea of glasses across. But yeah, um, the... SMG also has um, a secondary mode, right? It's a static mesh of it. Well, anyway, I'll just pull it up here, right? So this whole bit, this like back bit, folds out, right? Um, yeah, so this was the original concept. Um, this fold stock flips out.
and uh, the fold-out version was going to be like uh, more like burst fiery and accurate, and then the uh, freehand one was going to allow for more rapid firing but less accuracy. I feel like that's even fine. Oh yeah, and also originally it had a grenade launcher underneath, and that was going to be the secondary fire mode, but then we. Uh, realized that that would probably just be better as its own weapon if we were going to do a grenade launcher. So, anyway, um, at least you can see that the original concept, uh, minus the grenade launcher, like, worked pretty good. Yeah, see, like this is the uh, miniaturized version of it. It's always really cool to like have an idea or like a concept of something and it just, it just translates exactly. That's very rare though. It took a lot of collaborative effort between me and Will to like get this to like work. Um, I had to do like a lot of like he did the original mesh, and then I had to like go in and like retarget and shrink things and push them around, and uh, and then he did a texture pass, and then I did a texture pass, and then it was it was a lot of work to get this working. And it's such a sick looking weapon, though. Um, like, I just love the idea of it. <laughs> oh man, I forgot about this. So, um, one of the advantages of like the type of uh, skeleton we built for the Moonbot is that it can do all this like really, really crazy stuff. So, it was such a pain to build um, like a wibbly wobbly arm um, skeleton with like all these like different joints and stuff. Um, but we wanted this like really, really stretchy character that felt dangerous, right? Um, like a good example is <laughs> ignore the Christmas hat is this punch right like the range on it's just insane like they're right now in engine um they're actually not as tall as they're going to be um they're gonna be a little bit taller than they currently are so you're gonna be punching up but <coughs> considering these guys are probably like a good head or two taller than uh mixed base biff is uh it makes this punch like super super dangerous but it's got like it quite literally has a wind up to it and you know the mesh technically doesn't do that right like in slow motion a lot of this stuff looks a little jank right because it's like wrist is twisting and it doesn't doesn't make sense but you're never gonna see that in like with your eyes it just looks looks good in real time that's like one of the things in animations um, like blur and blend frames it just has to look good in motion yeah cuz like that's right there that's terrible you're never gonna see that And then also uh, squash and stretch is really important when it comes to animation, right? Like his, uh, his fist like technically gets larger and stretches out to like really exaggerate things and then it hangs there and then it like snaps back. So you have it like rather than be a smooth 
thing where it just goes boom boom you have it go boom and then hang and then snap back yeah like it's so squashy and stretchy yeah it's, it's a classic cartoon technique <coughs> Yes, squash and stretch is <coughs> one of the best. And especially for a character, like a, char a character like this is, it's, I mean, they're they're so ideal for it because it's, this guy was designed with like those like, essentially like old Steamboat Willie cartoons in mind. Haha. <laughs> All right, got the glasses for the alien nerd girl done for your game. Oh wait, by that I mean glasses done for her. Oh, good, good. <laughs> oh man. But um, yeah, like punches for uh, McSpace Biff are a little bit heavier, and they don't they don't do as much of that like squash and stretch because he's more like a like a more put together character. Um, the kids are like very, very uh, snappy. Downward punch, right? And these chain into other attacks and. They look weird here, but like following the camera, it's not that bad. And then sometimes you just have like a really, really basic jab. Like, uh, I think it's really important to um, add personality to the animations, right? Sure, you can you can exchange animations between different different types of characters, but then you kind of lose a little bit of like the character, right? And in some cases, you can just share stuff like running or whatever. But things having like a different walk cycle That crouch is like super bad. Yeah, idle having um a good idle animation is like super important. But yeah, like these guys, they have this like very like boundy, bouncy walk. And it's like goofy, right? They've got like a lot of personalities, like they're happy to be there. They're they don't look particularly bright. They're just, they're just chugging along, right? Until they see you and then they kind of freak out a little bit. Um, then you got like a slower version. <laughs> I forgot about the, <laughs> their jank like crouch walk that we didn't finish. <laughs> Cause they're like, they're not really meant to like crouch, <laughs> right? So we wanted them to kind of like have to work at it because their their legs are like <laughs> super wobbly. It's not done, but <laughs> yeah, they're. Yeah, they're they're incredibly clumsy. Um, <laughs> they're just, I mean, they've got tubes for legs. They're wibbly wobbly, uh, but they're dangerous, right? And that's the thing. It's like everything in the McSpace Piff world has like a little bit of goofiness to them, almost. Uh, like these guys don't look particularly threatening, but they'll mess you up. And also, these guys aren't finished, right? Um, 
Like this is a uh, kind of proxy geometry. The concept's there, right? But it's not, it's not like a fully finished and realized uh, character. But uh, let me see, I think I have. Got like <coughs> a screenshot of them somewhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Oh yeah, here they are. Very, very similar, right? But just ever, ever so slightly different. And obviously, these can be a. Um, finalized version but the idea is uh the center bit is going to be the housing for the laser that you get as the weapon um so when you kill them they're like blades and everything fall off there's like this uh carapace right the like thing that's like actually jetting them around and pushing them around uh it's holding like the laser weapon, and it's kind of like a Samus Metroid Prime cannon, and it pops out of that, and then you can hold it and laser things. Um, adding a bit of personality for characters, you can not only do it for animations, but their outfit as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, how a character looks is uh half their personality a lot of the times like it, it tells a little like a major story about them right like the difference between uh like this guy and This guy is entirely their outfit, right? In terms of animations and whatever, they're they're gonna be very very similar. It's like this guy's a little beefier, you know. He looks a little bit more intimidating, whereas like this guy looks like kind of goofy and clumsy. And proportionally, they're not all that different, right? So it's just their outfit and color palette. Just had an idea for an outfit part for another character. You know those silk scarves? What if it was like a live snake that's hanging around the neck? Oh, dude, uh, that would be very cool. Not, not quite like this, but like a, something like that. Cool concept, always like that. That's the Snake Hashira from uh, Demon Hunter. Sorry, Demon Slayer. Obviously more scarf-like, right? Yeah, you would need more snakes for that. Yeah, that would more snake. Yep, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this guy. <laughs> oh, he doesn't. He just keeps cracking me up, dude. Just. And then just like the. The heavy breathing animation. Big old boy. Chunky. Oh, he thick. Yeah. Yeah. Big old chunker, dude. Oh man, it's eleven thirty already. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably call this stream here.
just because uh, <laughs> yeah the heavy breathing <laughs> yeah the heavy breathing animation is just it's so funny dude i gotta i gotta get this guy his own like yeah because like this is how you're gonna talk to him right just a very uncomfortable view in general and this guy doesn't have like his like proper texture or material right now because we're gonna put like mustard and like ketchup stains all over him and have just a whole different material but uh yeah, the hot dog king. The hot dog king. He's gonna be someone you're gonna have to deal with at some point. You're gonna do some quests for him. Yeah, I can hear his body just crying for help. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Made me remember I need to redo my big mini gun guy. Oh, dude, I, I love minigun characters. Big minigun guy is like classic trope. Shout out, shout out to the Team Fortress 2 Heavy. And uh, shout out to the uh, original root minigun centaur that never made it into the game. We were going to save it for Chapter 2, and uh, we never got to do Chapter 2. All hail the hot dog king. Yeah, dude. Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king. Alright, well. This room's looking kind of cool. I'm digging this. Um, I'm thinking... Once we finish up with this room, we're probably going to go and build a whole new area. I'm thinking like a terrarium of some kind. Uh, for like the grubs. Because Will's going to be finishing those up probably next week. But yeah, this is this is looking kind of interesting, and uh, it's a maze, but it's it's not a maze, right? Like it's just funneling you up to to be on the same level as like this area over here. So this area will probably come out into like some sort of boss arena. Well, not boss arena, but like fighting like mini boss wave arena and then um it will do like a kind of drop down connection back into like a more like a central hub over here right where like all the other areas connect so this has been super cool i'm i'm digging where this level's going um yeah Thanks, y'all, for hanging out. It's been super, super fun. Um, especially starting out this stream as, like, a co-op stream. I think Will and I are going to do that a little more often because that collaborative effort is is really, really cool to see it uh, happen live. And, uh, anyway, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>